So today I am cycling towards Glen Affric, up this way, into the hills, and I have parked the car at uh, Morovich, which is about half a mile back that way. So here we go. It's quite cold today, but uh, it's not raining, and uh, that's uh, a big bonus in this part of the world. So, it's already mid-afternoon. I'm not sure how far I will get. Depends on the daylight. Should be light until about six o'clock. So this is uh, the Afric to Kintail Way, and uh, there's an ash tree growing at the side of the river here. A lot of Scotland doesn't have many trees. And uh, I am taking, the, taking a cycle, taking a bike ride, um, and I haven't made a video for a while. I haven't made many videos for a number of years. Um, I made loads back in about 2011, 2012. Um, really up to the point where I became a, a dad and then life got even busier than it was before. But at this point in time uh, I am feeling an enormous sense of freedom and that's the positive, that's the glass half full side of things. Um, I'm in the process of separating from a very restrictive and controlling relationship and uh, but at the same time I have very restricted limited access to my children I will see them tomorrow briefly um, so that is kind of laying heavy on my heart but one of the things about uh, freedom is just don't need to ask anybody if you want to go somewhere. So you can take off with a bike and head up into the hills, which is what I'm doing now. And it's fantastic, it's beautiful here. A little bit of sunshine on the snow up there. Um, so, onwards and upwards. Yeah, one of the great things about escaping from a very controlling relationship is, like I said, the sense of freedom and uh, not being answerable. You don't have to get somebody's permission. And one of the restrictions I've had over many years is about talking at all about where I am, where I live, what my real name is, anything about the children, all of these things are completely taboo, like forbidden. For, I have been forbidden from mentioning these things at all, but now uh, I'm no longer under control, so I uh, live not so far from here, um, and uh, up in that direction is uh, Morvich and Kintail and the Isle of Skye and uh, yeah today I'm not it's just like an experimental run because I don't have so many hours of daylight but I'm heading in this direction which ultimately leads to Glen Affric which is a beautiful place I haven't been there for years but really really nice with ancient pine forest and uh, uh, if you keep going it takes you all the way to Drum the Drocket on the side of Loch Ness I think it's 44 miles from Drum the Drocket to uh, Morvich, where I started. And there are a couple of bothies along the way. I'm not sure if today I will get as far as the first both bothy, but uh, I am going to keep going. There are a few trees on uh, very steep bits of ground that the deer and the sheep can't get to. Even, even pine trees, by the looks of it up there. And, 
yeah, this is this is the way we're going. So um, keep 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 going. Um, my son is eight years old, um, and he would love to be here with me now. Um, I've talked before. He's very much into his mountain biking, and he has got me back into mountain. <clears throat> excuse me, back into mountain biking after uh, more than twenty years of hardly going on a bike at all. When I was a teenager, back in the nineties, um, and mountain biking was quite a new thing. It kind of evolved from BMXs in this country. I never had a BMX, but I had a mountain bike. Um, I had a couple over the years um, and uh, that was great fun and now I've really got back into into that at uh, nearly 50 years old and uh, but because of the restrictions that my wife um, soon to be ex-wife has put on me bringing him along today is unfortunately not possible but uh, all of that is a very long, complicated story. And in a, in a way, I am sort of just scoping this out for how rideable it is, um, with a view maybe later in the year that uh, he can come with me up here. And I have other friends, one in particular who, um, like my best friend who I've known for 40 years, and uh, he lives in New Zealand these days. Um, he's going through a, a rough time at the moment. Um, and he's hit the bottle pretty hard. And I feel kind of helpless because I'm stuck living and working on the other side of the planet. Um, but I speak to him reasonably often. And uh, he's also... Um, quite into his biking these days and I wish he could be here too so this is a little bit tricky with one hand holding the camera um, one day I may get a, a GoPro or some such thing um, instead of holding my phone but it's really beautiful here today and uh, I wish my children and my friends could be here as well. Um, one of the things about living in a remote part of the West Highlands of Scotland, you know, beautiful as, as it is, um, so many of my friends and family are literally hundreds or thousands of miles away. So, yeah, just taking all this in. I can see the first bothy up ahead. It's closer than I thought, and, and also less steep than I thought it was going to be. So um, that's that's quite achievable in a, in an hour or two. So yeah, onward and upward. I've just come up the steepest bit so far, and I'm a little bit out of path. But I would imagine that compared to What's further up? Um, this will be this will be quite tame. Um, don't know if you can see the orange roof of the bothy up ahead. Shouldn't take too long to to get there now. So we're almost at the bothy now, and it has taken uh, barely an hour and twenty minutes, and I've not been rushing, so. It would be relatively easy to get up here from the car in about an hour, which is a lot uh, uh, quicker than I was anticipating. But I can see, you can see, the bridge crosses over the river there, and then it looks like quite a steep, windy, rough path going up to that pass up there. I'm going to start to go up there um, and see what it's like. Um, but with daylight and all that, um, I'm not going to go too far. If I get up to that high bit, that would be good. We'll see. So we've reached 
the bothy here and uh, it's locked and uh, that's unusual for bothies I've I've been to in the past but not not for many years um, but there's a key and a combination lockbox thing so presumably you need some sort of permission to stay here water supply there and uh, an old ruin down there, in need of a little bit of restoration and uh, I'm going to continue on in this direction. We've reached the first bridge. Uh, there is another one because this uh, river sort of takes a fork so we go over the, another bit behind there on another, another bridge. This bit is a little bit tricky for cycling um, so there's a, a lot of getting on and off so but I do want to get a bit further and uh, yeah see what the views are like also up here there's an area I wasn't aware of um, that has been fenced off and it's allowing the natural woodland to regrow so I always like seeing things like that um, of nature taking over in, in a way where the high population of grazing animals, deer and sheep, in areas that are not fenced off, um, there are very few trees able to uh, survive. They just can't, can't get a start. So, let's keep going. So now we're on the other bridge. You can see the way we came past the bothy over there and the path goes round the back of this bit over the other bridge then this bridge and the path continues. Most of this for me is uncyclable um, but I want to go a bit further. So I reckon I've gone far enough for today I've got to think about the daylight and getting back and uh, it's really beautiful up here and I am, um, let me just turn this round yeah, sitting on a rock and uh, having some tea so as they say around here, Slanjubar and uh, yeah, I wanted to, um, let me turn this thing around again. Yeah, I wanted to um, just share my thoughts about being in a very restrictive, controlling relationship. What's happened with me is that a couple of days ago, it was my 15th wedding anniversary. No cards or flowers or presents or anything were exchanged in either direction. And, uh, but, like I said, I have uh, an enormous sense of freedom and that's a good thing. And for many years, um, I've, become, I've been very isolated from friends and family and in the last couple of years I've reconnected in a big way um, I've seen my parents for the first time in over 10 years last autumn um, my sister and my brother for almost as long um, and many other friends um, you know it's been seven eight nine years or more since I last saw them so reconnecting with family and friends who I was convinced in a way to believe were terrible toxic people um, you know I've come to realize what well, I kind of knew all along that that wasn't true so here's to here's to the future and uh, coming back here with uh, with friends and family the children would absolutely love it here. I miss them so much um, at the moment. I, I haven't been able to live 
at the family house uh, really since since Christmas things got really bad um, and I'm staying in temporary accommodation at the moment but uh, once I've got uh, myself back on my feet accommodation wise um, yeah things will be things will become easier I'm pretty pretty sure about that but meanwhile just live for the moment seize the day and uh, yeah I'm gonna have my tea now In the last few years, um, friends and family have helped me massively to uh, recognise how strange the situation I've been in has been, and I'm very grateful to them for helping me out practically and emotionally. And uh, if they ever see this, then yeah, thank you so, so much. Anyway, I, uh, unfortunately my phone is very low on memory, so I will say, um, see you in the next one.